we'll get stuck into it. First things first. I'm welding these plates back in. So I just clean them up. Got the old MIG going. And I will not be using 20. Probably about 16. A little bit of Y speed. And I'm going to be welding in some of the pieces back in the dash here. Just to recreate that, just because that's really floppy. And same as the other side, I'll just to strengthen up the dash frame a little bit more. And then, and then, I've got some paint. So I'm going to paint the roll cage. That'll be fun. And once all the roll cage is painted, I will, um, um, I'll mask it up before I do any other stuff so I don't get over spray on it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I'll do that now. And when it does come time where I'm painting the ute, I'm gonna do, I'll do time-lapse videos of the paint gun and stuff, but that's further down the track, so. All right, just like that. So then little pieces loaded in, ground back. And I got little pieces of in here too. I didn't have to put these in, but let's put a little bit of extra strength back in. And that went all the way over here in that corner. Next step will be um, painting the cage. Yeah. All right, got the roll cage all painted in satin black. I'm just gonna let it dry overnight and then yeah, move on to the next thing. I like satin black on roll cages, it just looks really neat. Just doing a few little touch-ups on the top here, paint, and then that's pretty much it. All the interior will be painted. Still don't know about I was gonna put carpet on the floor, but I didn't realise that the moulded carpet isn't going to fit because they modified the tunnel so I'll have to um, maybe even paint the floor and have no carpet which sucks because I really want to have carpet on the floor oh well next video I've done a little bit of work over this weekend um, mounted the front engine plate which is a chassis the whole idea of this setup is I'm gonna replace these are just temporary um, just some shims off the old control arms but I'm just gonna make a bush that'll slide in and out of here and um, pretty much undo the bolt and the engine plate will slide forward to get the dowel pins out of the gearbox and it's just got a get lifted up past and then hopefully it'll come out um, I still got to trim a lot of the engine plate up and everything so like it'll be cut you know under there and however else and that sort of stuff um, just dummying stuff up doing the cross member now also so I just cut it out and I'll have Um, this is something I laser cut, so I did the drawings, laser cut this. Let me flip it around. I've got a welding helmet on, it's not helping. Okay, so that's going to sit around there. Uh, there's going to be three bits of chromoly tube. In the bottom there it's going to shoot across the other side and the way i'm doing this is it's going to be removable so this is the actual cross member plate and i'm going to have a plate similar to this without the three holes at the bottom that's going to get welded to here and then one welded on the other side as well and then i'll have two of these laser cut 
it'll have the um, the tube three bits of tube running through it and that's pretty much going to be the cross member and I'll probably get it done out of six mil plate so six mil plate for that six mil plate for the one that bolts to it and same for the other side and I might even make a doubler around the lower area where the, the stress will be I might make a doubler plate and weld on there better be safe than sorry now that thing's snapping in half so I cut a bit more of the tunnel out also to the tail shaft and I notched uh, that I don't know what the hell it is, the thing up there but I notched that out and I'm currently in the process come over to my fab shop Oh, here it is. In the process of um, making the thing I'm going to weld in there, so I got two bits of uh, 5mm flat bar, weld them together, and it's pretty much going to go up in here. And I'm just going to weld it up around here. So just weld it around here, weld it around here, and I'll put all the strength back into that. And I actually heated these bits of flat bar up and hit them with a hammer to get that shape and bend them. Alright, so I've got that piece welded in. You can see it's opening up a lot. The worst lighting for this. Yeah. tail shaft misses that which is good with the diff right up this is pretty much the back of the gearbox right there so excellent what are we doing next Got a hood lining there, super fun. Uh, I don't know, wait and see. New day working on the car, come into my shed and have a look. So I've got some brackets, plasma cut uh, for the cross member, which I've completely chopped out. Add the car uh, up on the hoist to get the weight off the wheels because it'd probably snap in half. I uh, got these laser cut over at um, 05 Rutherford and plasma cut. Did I say plasma? Plasma cut. Anyway, so this is going to be the removable cross member. I'm going to weld these plates. I drew these up on the computer and I actually laser cut these on my laser out of plastic just to make sure that they were going to work and then I bought some plate and yeah, 6mm plate so it's fairly sturdy and oh let me just freaking magnet the GoPro down alright so that's pretty much going to sit like that and that's going to get welded to the body like that there'll be one this side and then one on the other side and the bolts are going to go through here from this side I'll be going in that way because once the sump's in there it's really close so I wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to get the bolts undone otherwise so I'm going to have the bolts going in that way and I'm going to try and tap thread in this plate this is a doubler so that's going to get welded on there just to build some strength and there'll be three bits of chromoly tube this stuff here it's thick wall um when i say thick it's like 0.12 
wall tube and it's one and a half inch so there'll be three of them running across so that'll be plenty of strength for the cross member and the tunnel did a bit of chopping here I'm gonna try and use the old tunnel um, and just patch uh, I'll probably cut this in a bit more to get a bit more room um, to get to the gearbox and stuff so I'll probably bring this out about here cut down here and then I'll just weld infill panels going from there down and these bits here where it's curved I'll probably chop that off and just run it straight down but I'll open this up a bit more because I want to try and get to them bolts up the top so I can remove the gearbox um, without taking the motor out and stuff and yeah that sort of stuff so there's plenty of room tail shaft will miss that and for this tunnel for the tail shaft bought some 0.9 mil sheet this stuff here so I'll cut that to shape bend it should be able to bend that by hand so I went with the 0.9 because I'm trying to bend it by hand just make a nice tunnel and then weld it to the back of that and have it running through and then another job I gotta do this is the headlining so these are a pain in the butt. I did the one in McFry, which is a lot bigger. Um, it should be easier, but it's still a prick of a job. I've got to get some glue for that. I actually got some um, pinch weld, like cut bits of the old pinch weld. And I just fold it up like that, put glue on it, clip it on, just go around and then try and get all the, um, the lines out and stuff. It's a bit of a pain of a job really but I'll do it might even do a time-lapse of that one but for now I'm gonna attack this cross member because I'm trying to get the car on the ground so I'll be back very soon just want to take you guys over to my fab shop again check out some of my MIG welds Have a look at how good these have gotten. I've just done little sections. Obviously, if you go from here to there in one go, it's going to look really neat, but it's also going to freaking banana shit. Do a little weld from there, and then one from there to there. But I've come a long way though, they're looking really neat now. One of the plates welded. Do the other one. Alright, I've welded in the plates in the chassis. I uh, just put some etch primer on them. I did that yesterday actually. And I put a little gusset on the back side here. So they hang down around 30mm lower than the standard. Um, it's not really much of an issue because Usually the exhaust hangs down lower anyway. And I'm having a crack at TIG welding again. So I just migged in around here on the back side of the pipe. And this thing's hot. It's a TIG weld of the pipe up here. Still pretty rocky at TIG welding. I couldn't I can't really get in there and clean it well enough either. That's not really helping. But the TIG welding will look neater than me welding the pipes anyway. I'm just going to do the bottom. Um, yeah, do the bottom. Uh, let it dry. Put some primer on it. And put it back in here. Actually, I might paint it first. Put it back in here. And I'll paint around here. And then I'll just bolt it back up. Excellent. Um, so this removal cross member two. Whenever this gets unbolted, the engine is going to be in the car and it's going to be up on the hoist like this. So 
when I originally cut this, the cross member only moved like one millimeter. So even when the engine's in, uh, there's gonna be more weight on here, but it's gonna be a downward weight on the top of the arms. So none of this should move once it's unbolted. So it'll just, once I unbolt it, it'll literally just go back in four bolts and to get the sump off in the car I'll have to undo the, this drag link as well um, I don't know, probably just undo it here or something or there and just lower it down and then the sump can come off see if anything's you know check bearings and stuff it's just something to have it's handy um, it's gonna be a high maintenance engine so I've rubbed the shit out of things, so it's going to be handy to have that sort of stuff. Alright, I'll get stuck into this, get it done, and I'll give you an update when I get this finished. Alright, so I've got the cross member installed. It's a little tight on this side. I kind of had a feeling it would be. I did put some thread in the 6mm plate, so I'm probably going to have to have them bolts cut flush. And just rely off the bit of thread I put in the plate but all the strain is really on these bottom ones I'm gonna put a nut on these bottom ones just to hold it a bit better and I'll probably um might trim them back too it's just hitting in the bottom as well on that line so and I just painted it too I was kind of hoping to jag it so I'm going to have to get the grinder in there and even the die grinder, just try to trim a bit off so it misses the sump. But trim them, trim them. That's how it looks. Looks pretty fancy. Plenty of clearance. awesome all right so I just sat the blower back on and I've done everything up I just wanted to check the clearance I had back here which as you can see is like two millimeters maybe if that so I'm probably gonna try and bring this in a bit more just so I have about I don't know five mil clearance or so just so I know that it won't touch um, very close down here too. I tried trimming it back a bit more. It's right on the sticker. It's literally like just two mil off. So I'm gonna have to give the sump a little love tap right on the sticker just to get, I don't know, I just need like four mil clearance or something like that. Just enough so I know it won't hit or rub. And we can take the block back out and take it over to Brad and let him put it back together. Because that's McFry's engine block, so um, yeah, I'm still waiting on. Uh, what have we got? Camshaft is a hold up on that mainly, so yeah. And that's a tall deck block, and this will be going on a short deck, so it's probably, uh, I don't know, a centimeter shorter. So. Might not be able to see me supercharger here. I'll probably just see Littlefield, which sucks, but it looks cool. All right, I'm gonna heave this back off and put it back on the shelf and start on something else. So I've just taken the motor back out. That's pretty much how we're looking here at the moment. I just took the tunnel out as well and the gearbox. The sump sits very close to this side, so I had to trim a little bit more off there also. Plenty of room from the bottom up, it's just very close on this side, because I tried to wing it rather than double check, which isn't too bad. Pretty much right here is, uh, it wasn't touching, but it was a couple millimetres off, and the motor will move, so. I had to give it a good old love tap. Just get a few more 
millimeters of clearance. The blower also sat like just two millimeters off the back wall here, so um, I'd weld this. I gave it tacks across here, hit it in with a hammer, just to gain another I don't know four or five mil or something, and yeah, I'll clean all that weld up, and yeah, should have about I don't know, seven, maybe eight. Eight mil or something between the back of the blower and the the rear wall. I just bent up the tunnel in here. I folded up this here and on this side here as well. I just folded that up um, down on the floor too. I folded up the lip because that's going to be where I'm going to join it. This tunnel. Weld it across here. Cut off the um, this thing, whatever you want to call it, just to get a bit more clearance to um, get my hand in there and undo the gearbox bolts. So that'll go in there. This top section will line up fine with the firewall. Uh, everything else, nothing lines up, so I'm just going to have to get it in there, try and bend things and weld in patch sections and stuff. Alright, so I've done some welding up around here. This set up here, it's, I'm thinking I might have to just maybe cut the whole uh, heater box area out. right down here just to get that area fixed up unless I can somehow leave that there and try and make it look alright not too sure so I folded the tunnel up let's use some 0.9mm um, sheet some thin stuff because I don't have a bender here so I just I literally just sat it up on top of the here and just pulled on it to bend it to shape. That's it there. It's a bit of a wide tunnel, but it matches the um the rear of the the old one. It's about the same thickness as the old one, it's just taller. Um, I miscut this, so I'm just gonna have to weld it patch in there. What's that saying? Measure measure twice, cut once. I never do that. Got a nice air gap under here too, air conditioning. So it's gonna be welding sections in there, sections everywhere. Ooh, I reckon there's a good two two solid days of work getting all that welded up but I'll get it done and we'll see how it looks. Alright, so originally I said this would take two days and it's kind of already already been over two days, so like most jobs as cars, whatever you guess it's gonna take, you have times it by four. So I've literally just got this side done. Just welded in patch sections. I've decided I'm gonna cut down here, pretty much this whole heater box area. So it would've come out even this bit down here and then just weld a whole new piece in. So it'll just be like a flat area there. It's really the only easy sort of option I've got for that. What I did on the other side is I just cut along here so that pretty much lines up dead straight to this lip that I bent up on the floor. Um, welded a piece in across there and then up here I'll just cut down there and I'll just bend the metal so it lines up with each other, weld a piece in 
here I've got to chop a bit, cut into there a bit, and yeah, just one little piece in there as well. Alright, so I've cut out the old heater box area and put a new piece in. I'm going to butt weld that in there. Under here, I just ground all the welds back on the under underside of the floor. Just welded these two little patch sections in here. It was a pretty big job cutting that out and then trying to match that piece in because the um, the cowl area hangs down, runs through there, so I couldn't get a texture behind that top section to mark it. So. It actually took a lot of um, grinding to get that to fit in there like that. Had to take it in and out like 20 odd times and just slow the two away with the grinder. So hopefully this is the last time I get covered in shit because I'm sick of getting covered in shit. All right, so new day, welding this bad boy in. Um, so I have, this is 0.9 steel, so it's actually pretty thin stuff, pretty easy to warp. So I had a theory on welding this in. I just made it up in my head, so I don't know if it's any good or not. But I held that in position with magnets, the plate, and preheated the sheet metal with a torch around the whole area just get a bit of heat in it just so I could see where it started to um, you know, expand and then as soon as I put this down got the MIG welder and then just put a tack in every corner to hold it so that when it um, so while it's heated it's expanded so once I do all the tacks this will then cool down and it'll try to pull back in but all the tacks are going to hold it in position so it's got a bit of a pull on the metal rather than um, less likely for it to walk I just thought of it I don't know if it works or not but it looks like it works it feels good no tin canny it's nice and solid it's good um, yeah, so I'm just going to go around, just keep doing little dots around in circles and maybe when I half this gap, 
We'll probably put a tack in the middle there. I'd probably just start doing little lines then. Just like, like this. Skip a few, finish the line, skip a few, finish the line. Just to minimize the heat and the warpage. Grinding this down is nearly just as big a job as welding it up. I'll just bam out of the firewall. There's no oil canning at all, which is good. It's nice and solid. And straight. So weld it up my towel shaft loop. It's still a bit hot. It's gonna have bolt here, bolt here. So four bolts just mount to the bottom of the floor. It's gonna have a carbon fiber towel shaft anyway, but still need a loop. Alright, now it's starting to look a bit better. So I just use some etch primer, just um, spray tin stuff, just to minimise overspray. Just do the firewall, uh, all the bare metal stuff under there. And also put some on the tunnel and then put some enamel uh, satin black over that which is still drying so it'll kind of more look like same as this when it's dry and this is going to need to get sanded so I'm going to put um, some two pack um, same as a chassis here I'm going to use that over it I'll probably do three coats I'll do some masking up as well so I don't want to get the crap everywhere. So I'll probably do three coats and let it dry. And then I'll give it a sand just to get rid of some of the small angle grinder lines and stuff you can see. Because they'll stand out a lot once the black paint goes on. Same as up there. See them few little grinder marks in the metal. So I'll put three coats on, give it a sand, and then I'll just put one more coat on just to cover up all those and it should look really good and that's it for the video I was going to do the headlining but um, I'm just running out of time so this will be the video and that's all there is there isn't any more <laughs>